Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve max consecutive ones three, leak code number 1004. It's a great variable length sliding window problem. So we're given a binary rate nums and another integer k, and we want to return the maximum number of consecutive ones in the array if you can flip at most k zeros. So we're given a binary array, that means all of the entries are either one or zero, and we're given another integer here, k is equal to two. So what that means here is we can flip at most k zeros. We can flip at most two zeros. Okay, so we're looking for consecutive ones, and we want to know the maximum number of ones we can get if we can flip two zeros to be ones. So here we can obviously get three, and here if we flip both of these two zeros to be ones, we can get five, but actually we can get a better one, six. For example, if we were to flip this one and this one, then we would have these six in a row would all be ones. That is going to be the best we can do, which is six. And there's another way to get that. We could also get those six consecutive ones if we were to do this. And oh man, we're definitely not going to look at that example. That is way too complicated. So what we're going to do here is a sliding window. And for a sliding window, we are going to use two pointers. We set L and R both to the beginning at first. So that'll be the first index, which is zero. And so R is going to expand this window and L is going to contract the window. And we're saying window because window is going to be the same as any subarray. So we're looking at subarrays or equivalently windows. And the window will be defined by the left side will be our L and the right side will be our R. And right now they're in initialized at the very beginning. Now we want to keep track of a few things. We want to keep track of the max that we've seen so far. So I'll just call this max w for max window length or max width equivalently. That is going to be equal to zero because we haven't seen anything so far, but this is going to be the thing we return. It's the maximum length of any window that was valid. And we'll talk about what valid means in a moment. And we also want to keep track of the number of zeros that we have. So num zeros, so far we have none of them. And we want to keep track of zeros because if the number of zeros is ever bigger than K, so if we had three zeros here, well, that's going to be invalid because we can only flip at most K equals two zeros. So if you had three zeros, you know that that's invalid. So, so we want this to be less than or equal to K. Okay, so right now let's make the window to be this. And since this is a one, well, we have not any more zeros than we did before because it's a one, not a zero. And this current window we're looking at is actually valid here. It's valid as long as this value here is less than or equal to K. And it is less than or equal to K, it's less than or equal to two. Okay, so this window is valid, meaning that we at least saw a max length of one here. You can always get the length of our window by R minus L plus one. This is going to be zero minus zero plus one because these are indices to this beginning. So this is going to give one here. And so the max window length we saw right now is one. Now let's try and find a bigger one. When we're looking for a bigger one, we'd move R over, which is going to try and expand our window. So is this valid? Well, yes, we're not going to have any more zeros because this was a one. And so nothing really changed here. All we did is see a bigger window, which is now two. Okay, let's look for a bigger one. We're going to expand our window over here. And so this is going to have three ones in a row. Well, nothing really changes again. This is simply just going to be three. Okay, now when we move it over, over, it starts to get a little more interesting here. So we saw a zero. Since we saw a zero, we now have one zero. However, this is still okay because we are allowed to flip this. We're allowed to flip two zeros to be ones. And so one is still less than or equal to two. So we're allowed to do this. And so this is currently valid. Therefore, the current window length is four. There's four things here. And so we can do four there. Okay, now when we move over here, it's getting really close here. We actually now have two zeros. And so this still holds for now. And yes, we can have a window length of five because we have five things here, but we flipped as many as we can here. So as soon as we run into a zero, which is right now, this is no longer valid. Okay, this is not a valid window. Therefore, we actually need to fix this because we have three zeros. We need to make this hold again because this doesn't hold right now. So to make it hold, we need to contract the window by moving over L. Now, if this is a zero, then we'd want to decrement our number of zeros because we'd be losing a zero, but that wasn't a zero. So we have nothing to do there. It actually didn't help. So we'll move this over here, still not helping, still not helping. But now when we get here, just before we move this over, we're going to say, okay, we actually have one less zero than we did before because we're moving this in here. So now we have two zeros again, as it says here, our window is valid yet again. 
We will move over here. We get three. That's not any better, but at least it's still valid. Over here, four. Over here, five. And at the very end here, we actually get six. Okay, our window length is six. This is valid because we can flip both of these. And so this actually gets our maximum of six here. Okay, so the main thing here is that our window is invalid. It is invalid while the number of zeros is bigger than K, okay? If that is ever bigger than K, then this is invalid. And so that's gonna be the main thing that we use in our code. So let's go write it up. Okay, so we'll get the max window length that we've seen so far. I'll just call that max W is equal to zero. We have nothing so far. The number of zeros we have so far is also zero. Uh, we'll get N is equal to the length of numbers used for looping purposes. And we'll set up that L is equal to zero. And we're going to do our sliding window by using a for loop through R. So we'll do for R in the range of N. So when we expand our window, if the nums at R, that new thing we got there, if nums at R is a zero, zero, well then we need our number of zeros to go up by one. Now, we just incremented the number of zeros, our window might be invalid, and it's invalid while number of zeros is bigger than k. That means we must flip more things than we're able to, and so our window is invalid here. If that is the case, well then, let's try to make it better. If nums at l is equal to a zero, that's great because we get a zero back. We have num zeros is going to go down by one, so we're allowed to flip one more again. And no matter what, whether it was a zero or a one, we want to move l forward forward with L plus equals one. Okay, so this will keep running until our window eventually becomes valid. So this is while it's invalid. At the end of this while loop, our window is valid. And if it's valid, we can calculate its length. W is equal to R minus L plus one. And we'll get max W, let me just zoom out here. Max W is going to equal the maximum of itself and the current window length W. And at the very end here, we will have gone through the entire binary array and we can simply just return what we're interested in, which is max w. If we were to submit this, this will work. So this is a sliding window algorithm with variable length. That means we have basically two different indices going through the array. They are both always going forward and never going backwards. That is going to give O of n. Okay, so it's O of n. The space complexity here, what are we storing? Not really anything too big here. We're keeping track of some variables that just are some numbers. Not really anything too big. So this is going to be a constant space or O of 1 space solution. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.